I'm Aaron Rutten, a professional digital artist and art instructor, and today I'll be taking an in-depth look at Realistic Paint Studio. I've scored this app based on what I feel is important in digital art software. I'm looking at brush variety, natural media stimulation, ease of use, and other important factors. And I'm only counting default content, not add-ons. Realistic Paint Studio is a very new application. The developers took the core features from an older app called PaintStorm Studio and repurposed them into a new application with a UI aesthetic that is more traditionally focused. And now on to the scoring. Let's start with the brushes in Realistic Paint Studio. The overall variety of default brushes is rather poor. There is a decent variety of categories, but not very many brush variants. The brushes are not customizable, but the organic media effects look pretty good. There are some okay blenders that do support transparency blending. However, some brushes blend to white. There aren't any airbrushes to speak of. The ink brushes are poor quality. There's really just a ballpoint pen for doing line art and that's it. It doesn't get very wide either. There are some texture brushes like pastels and graphite that do an okay job, but I wish there was some more variety like sponges. There aren't any particle brushes or stamp brushes in Realistic Paint Studio but it does have some decent impasto brushes in the oils category. However, there aren't any controls to adjust the paint depth. It also has a category of watercolor brushes. These do not support fluid dynamics, but there are some decent looking drips that you can create. I think these are more like rendered drips that you stamp on rather than paint that actually goes through a drip simulation like in Rebel. The pencil brushes in Realistic Paint Studio are quite good and support pen tilt, so you can shade with the side of your pencil. Realistic Paint Studio does not offer a dual brush mode since you can't edit brushes. And there aren't any GPU acceleration options or properties you can modify. Moving on to brush performance. The brush cursor options in Realistic Paint Studio are pretty sad. You can only show the dab shape or turn it off. It also offers one of the smallest maximum brush sizes at only 450 pixels. Many brushes don't even go above 300 pixels. It does have good brush resizing shortcuts, you can even resize the brush on the screen by holding Ctrl and Alt on Windows or Command Option on Mac and dragging. There aren't any stabilization or anti-aliasing properties you can modify, and brush calibration is a global setting rather than per brush. Now for the transformation tools. The transformation tools in Realistic Paint Studio are fairly basic without any distortion or perspective modes. Because you cannot select more than one layer at a time, transforming groups and multiple layers is not possible. There aren't any distortion brushes or a mesh warp either. Let's talk about the layer controls in Realistic Paint Studio. Layers functionality is very limited. You can't even move the layer order. You can't select blend modes, but you can lock transparent pixels. Masking is nowhere to be found. There are collapse layer options. And the clear layer shortcut is a button you can press in the layers palette, but there's no shortcut key for it. Saving files is pretty pitiful in Realistic Paint Studio. You cannot export to PSD, and the only file formats you can export as are JPEG and PNG. From what I can tell, there isn't any sort of crash recovery, backup, save, or autosave feature. Now let's look at papers and canvas texture support. Realistic Paint Studio does have paper and canvas texture properties, but they are not customizable. There are also textures you can apply to the canvas, but they are not dynamic, and brushes cover the texture opaquely rather than blending with it. There seems to be some texture randomization going on when I overlap strokes, but I cannot control it with a property. You cannot use custom papers and textures, and there are no impasto or surface lighting controls to modify the lighting on the texture. In terms of grids and guides, Realistic Paint Studio does not have any perspective guides, but it does have additional guides. There's a ruler, but it's one of the more difficult ones I've used. And there is a neat compass tool you can use to draw circles. You can forget about symmetry painting. And while there is a grid paper you can draw on top of, it is not dynamic. As for the panels and palettes, Realistic Paint Studio has a proper reference image panel. However, I'm not a fan of the background. It would be better if when you resize the window, the reference scales down and remains centered. There aren't any custom brush or shortcut palettes, but there is a way to select your favorite brushes and tools. It's a shame you can't move this around the UI or rearrange the order of the tools. There's not much you can do to customize the color picker. You can toggle between the square HSV or triangular HLS color pickers. 
One thing Realistic Paint Studio has going for it in terms of advanced color is that it uses its own real color blending mode to achieve a natural hue shift when you fade a color from light to dark using pressure. However, the color sampling is weird and won't sample the opacity consistently. It's like the dropper is trying to preserve my original color, but when I mix a second color in, I can now sample the intermediate colors. Also, the paint still mixes in an RGB style where yellow and blue make gray. Although it's not perfect, I'm glad to see that more art software developers can appreciate sophisticated color modes. CMYK color proofing? Who needs it? Well, anyone who wants to print their work. Realistic Paint Studio doesn't support it, so you'll have to use Photoshop or something else to proof your color. I know I've picked on this app a lot, but dang does it have really cool color swatches. The swatches change for each type of media, so when I select an oil brush, I get tubes of paint, but when I select a pastel, I get a box of pastels in a rainbow of colors. I can even use the swatches on a palette and use a unique paint deformation feature to erode watercolors to thin them out. The oils can be used up and mixed on the palette. This is one of the few art applications where you can use the palette to load multiple colors on your brush. Absent are any color harmonies or color variability controls, those really should be essentials in a traditional art-focused application like this. Now for the canvas controls. The new canvas dialog is interesting. It's very visual, but it takes too many clicks just to get to the custom new canvas dialog. The max canvas size in Realistic Paint Studio is okay at 6000 by 6000 pixels. There are a few canvas presets, but not a very good selection. Want to resize your image? You can't. How about cropping? Nope. You'll just have to use a different app for that. I suspect some of this would be too tricky to do while maintaining the graphical backgrounds. You can flip the canvas with the H key. Realistic Paint Studio can't be bothered with color profiles because they aren't traditional enough. Multi-monitor support is good, but sadly, no grayscale preview. On to the interface. The visual appearance and organization of the interface in Realistic Paint Studio is okay. While it looks really visually appealing, this sort of UI is not my cup of tea. These graphical UIs make it difficult to access brushes and features because they are buried in menus in order to keep the workspace tidy. Unless you've added favorites, it's a chore to select brushes because you have to open a box and look inside. The large graphics look nice, but they take up too much room and require a lot of movement to navigate through. I'm also not a fan of the way the brushes and tools are labeled. You have to know what the traditional equivalent of each brush or tool is to intuitively grasp what it can do. This requires a lot of research, and I find it easier if the brush just shows what it does in a simple way rather than by using a flashy analogy. As far as the interface ease of use, I scored it as good. However, it's irritating that you have to switch between the different media modes like watercolor or oils, and you cannot access both watercolor and oils in the same composition. Despite the lack of features, this is one of the most difficult UIs that I have used because I'm so used to the standard art app UI. Subjectively, I'd score the visual appearance, organization, and ease of use much lower, but I do think this type of UI could be appealing to first-time digital artists who have a traditional art background. There is a minimal default UI which can easily show and hide elements. While you can't customize the brush palette, you can add some favorites to the bottom of the screen, which just barely counts. Aside from a couple of minor preferences and color picker options, there's really not much you can do to customize the other palettes. You cannot export or import brushes, but you can purchase additional brushes. You also cannot export or import the layout. I've never seen such bare bones preferences, but I guess they are keeping it simple. There are some keyboard shortcuts in here as well, which can be customized by double clicking on them. No collaborative painting feature for this app. And as far as the overall number of features in Realistic Paint Studio, I'd say it's poor because there just isn't much to this application. Now I'll test the compatibility with my drawing tablet. Pen pressure is okay. I would have scored it as good, but occasionally pressure would stop working and I had to reset Realistic Paint Studio. Pen tilt is the same story. While it works great most of the time, there is the occasional issue where I have to restart Realistic Paint Studio. This is unusual for my tablet. Although there are brushes that could benefit from it, and the developers could easily have brought it over from Paintstorm Studio, somehow the rotation expression is missing. I guess that it's because you can't change the brush properties anyways. Perhaps this will change in an update because rotation is another essential for apps like this. Multi-touch input is better in Realistic Paint Studio than in Paintstorm Studio, but that's not saying much. 
It's not as buggy, but it still only supports zooming, but no panning or rotation. Finger painting or blending can happen. You cannot use your pen eraser as a brush or blender, but not many art apps can. You also cannot use independent pen settings to toggle between brushes. And although there is a dripping paint feature, you cannot control the direction of the drips using the accelerometer like you can in Rebel. Now for the tools. I'm not a fan of the selection tools in Realistic Paint Studio. The huge, beautiful graphics look great, but it's not obvious what they do by looking at them. Adding the selection tools as favorites is essential because otherwise you'll have to click several times to get to them. I really want to know how much this stuff really draws in traditional artists compared to how much it drives away experienced artists like myself who do have a taste for the traditional aesthetic. Text tool? Don't be a fool. Realistic Paint Studio is much too cool. Here's what else you won't find in this application. A paint bucket tool, a gradient tool, pattern tools, vector tools, shape tools, not counting selections, essential effects, or comic creation tools. There is a very basic time-lapse recording feature that can render to MP4 video, but no animation tools. Now that I've gone over this application head to toe, let's add up the points to get an objective score. Realistic Paint Studio earns a score of 93 out of 273 possible points. If you want to know how this software ranks compared to other art apps, check out my Top 7 Digital Art Apps video. That's all for my review of Realistic Paint Studio. For more digital art reviews and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.